So how do you create a great workplace? I'm gonna be looking at Mark, uh, Marcus Buckingham's and Kurt Hoffman's work with 12 dimensions of great uh, workplaces in the leadership in education text. And there are 12 they talk about in creating a great workplace. Um, so I'm just gonna go through each one and then I'm gonna talk about it from the perspective of being an educational leader and providing that kind of space and creating that kind of space for others that work there. The first is number one, I know what is expected of me at work. So helping others, uh, whether it's like clearly articulated expectations that are already set already, or it's helping them to create expectations for themselves and goals for themselves or goals that would help them and benefit that workplace, that school, that location, working with them to create that space. That's being an educational leader. Two, I have the materials and equipment I need to do my work right. So if you've been an educational leader at your site, then you oftentimes know a lot of the different resources that are there in that place, the peoples, the connections, the information, right? So when you have a, a new newer person coming on board, or even if they're not new and they just happen to not know that resource that you've been privy to, this is your opportunity to support that person with everything that they need so that they can succeed in their goals. Three, at work, I have the opportunity to do what I do best every day. So we're all made differently, each one of us. And so when you know your leader as well, you're able to know what it is that they do best. And so supporting them with what it is that they do best. And you know, in a day there might be, let's say 10 things we need to do and only two things that we do best. Where are they spending most of the time? on the things that they're not the best at or the things that they are critical for, that they are the best for, and just really supporting them to do the best in the area that they are the best at. Four, in the last seven days, I have received recognition or praise for doing good work. I know I've talked about this in the past, catching others doing the right thing and really complimenting them and appreciate them. This. Gallup poll is saying seven days. They're doing this every seven days. So really, um, it's so hard to do this as an educational leader for others because we have so many staff that are working with us, but really striving to have that complimentary attitude where we're really appreciating and being appreciative of others and complimenting others, encouraging others by praising them. So important. Wow, seven days, in the last seven days, right? And what they're saying is a dimension of a great workplace, right? Number five, my supervisor or someone at work seems to care about me as a person. So my previous Ed family, I talked about checking in with folks. And uh, I think we do this as an educational leader, but also that I hope that's coming from a place of not just um, productivity, but of compassion as well. We are in our roles because we care. We are in our roles because we're compassionate people. And one way to show our compassion is by checking in with people, letting people know that we care about them. Number uh, six, there's someone at work who encourages my development. And so if you're an educational leader, then there are folks that are, you're gonna see that there are areas that they can grow and be developed. Now. It might be an area that they're interested in developing. Like sometimes uh, I'll have another colleague say, I'm interested in growing in this area. I'm interested in growing in this area. Then directing them to the areas where they can be developed. Sometimes it's in a group setting. Sometimes it's in a mentorship kind of setting. Uh, other times it's more of a suggestion. Hey, I suggest that this could be really helpful for you. But uh, definitely I think um, beginning with what, where it's, uh, Educate, where folks are interested in being developed. I think that's very important. Seven, at work, my opinions seem to count. So as the educational leader, when you listen to others, do you validate their opinion? Do you validate what they have to say? At the very least, even if I don't agree, I will try to do this. I will try to say, what I hear you saying is just to at least let them know that that opinion was heard. Whether I personally agree with it or disagree with it, I can pay attention carefully, listen carefully. And, and if I'm a neutral neutral on there, let's say, I don't agree or disagree, it's still an opportunity to support that person and let their opinion count. They care about it, right? 
And then of course, if I disagree, just con honestly and compassionately disagreeing as well. There's a place for that too, but uh, sparingly, right? Let's see. Eight, the mission and purpose of my company makes me feel my job is important. And fortunately, as educational leaders, the work in education is super important, but it surprises me at the same time how many folks do not feel that they are critical for the mission. And so part of our work as educational leaders is connecting them back to that goal. I know the mission here at Ed Family is to help students find out what they're good at so that they can do good with it. This is an important work. And so if I were working with others and this were the mission, it'd be reminding of them and how they are contributing to that purpose and to that goal. Let's see, number nine, my associates or fellow employees are committed to doing quality work. So once again, creating a space where quality work can be shared and honored. I think that's so important. Number 10, this might surprise you, I have a best friend at work. So, you know, I, I know some folks, when they think about work, they think this is just my professional space and everyone is my colleague and I just want to keep it professional. And and um, I, I can see why, you know, there's that element of keeping it professional, but I don't think that stops us from being friendly toward others. And, you know, there is a space to be that friend for another. Uh, I think there are many places in education where we can be that friend for another. Number 11, in the last six months, someone at work has talked to me about my progress. So as, as an educational leader, you know, hopefully you've had some conversations with folks that you work with and you asked them what their dreams were, what their goals were, what their aspirations were. And then when they're making progress on it, as people do when they focus in on it, many people do make progress. Oftentimes, what's interesting though, is they don't see their own progress. They don't see how much they've, they've grown. So letting them know, hey, look at this progress that you made in the area that you want. You know this area that you wanted to focus in on? Look how much progress you've made. That's so powerful when we can affirm that, see that, acknowledge that in a tangible way. Uh, let's see. And lastly, number 12, uh, this last year, I have had opportunities at work to learn and grow. And so uh, I think this is one of the most important things for us to do as educational leaders, to give our folks space to learn and grow, especially in the areas that they want to learn and grow. So when others indicate, hey, I want to learn and grow in this area, how can I scaffold alongside them to support that? So let's say they want to grow in delivering like professional development or something like that. Maybe the next step isn't, hey, why don't you just leave this? But maybe it's me saying, hey, we want to lead this together. Let's do this work together. So I hope you enjoyed learning about the 12 dimensions of great workplaces. Uh, I know that when you're in a school, there's just so much going on and you want to not just be in a okay school. I know you want to be in a great place to work. And these 12 dimensions, is a, it's a step in helping us think about how to make that space a good space. This video is helpful for you. Make sure you give it a like and subscribe. This is Dr. Jeff from Ed Family signing out.